Hi there, just read this disclaimer please. Alright guys, so I'm, I'm kind of halfway through my uh, Funsmith video. But uh, things happen, don't they? So this morning I got a, an email from the London Stock Exchange telling me about this announcement. A recommended offer for hypnosis. You know, it's not a good result in total of my whole investment, but uh, as you can see, the price has shot up by 30%. But as you can see, I'm kind of level. But that's level on my average holding, you know. Some of the early purchases I made were terrible investments. Um, but I just thought in real time I'd tell you about the offer. I saw that it equates to 93.2 pence per share. I had, I've had a quick look. I haven't spent, I mean, this only, I only saw this about 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago. So, um, haven't read it completely, but I had, a, I had a look at this timetable and conditions and I couldn't see anything that said this is going to happen within the next few weeks. Nothing obvious anyway. It could well be that it will happen within the next few weeks. But what I did notice is that the share price is up to 928 and the offer is 93p or something. So it's not a big difference. There's not a big arbitrage there. So I just decided to wipe my hands of it quickly while it was so close to the offer price. You know, who knows what's going to happen. It, this could instigate other offers. I'm not so sure that it would though because I'm pretty sure this is the same people who bought, clicking my fingers, what did I, what was it called? The other one, Round Hill Music. I'm pretty sure this is the same company but, that bought them. So I'm not so sure that other offers will come through that are any better and it's so close to the offer price I decided just to sell quickly so there you go I've, I've sold that's my that's me having sold the, the small holding that was in the general investment account as you can see here I'm halfway through my Fundsmith video as well and there is me selling at 92.6 pence the bigger holding that was in my ISA so what I'm going to do with this money I've got a few ideas I've, I've kind of been planning for this I've got a couple of ideas and I'll go through it later. I'm not going to rush though. I might do it tomorrow or the day after. I've pretty much formulated my plan for the money I've just sold out of song. This is what I'm thinking of doing with the money. Into some more basket case, cases basically. So, um, well, some basket cases and then a little bit into Scottish American. So Scottish American, it's just nice to take take some out, you know, and de-risk it a little bit. So that, so that, that money there is kind of in Scottish American for life, possibly. Um, I felt like topping it up because it's at a 9.48% discount, which doesn't happen very often. If you look at the 10 year chart, bit of a discount there in 2015, is it? And we've had a bit of a discount this past couple of years. So yeah, I just felt like topping that one up. That, that will make it the biggest holding, uh, just overtaking BlackRock smaller companies. And so the three here are GSF, which is Gore Street Energy Storage Fund, which is at a 43% discount, a mammoth yield of 11.68%. They're having issues with the national grid and kind of getting their batteries to be utilised properly to make money from them. They talk about it getting resolved. In the meantime, they've got some international batteries as well. I can't remember which countries exactly. I think some of them are in Germany. I can't remember some other countries. If you look at what I've accounted for here, I've actually multiplied the dividend by 0.5. So I've, account, I've accounted for a 50% cut in that dividend. Um, it's got a low, very low gear. Well, the gearing here, it says zero. This update in February, when that says zero, I think what it means is because gearing is a bit of an issue at the moment with with these higher interest rates. People, you know, lots of these funds have low interest rate loans that expire, and then they have to refinance. But this one does not seem to have that problem because if you look here, here we go. Healthy balance sheet, as previously disclosed, it has sixty six million in cash at the end of December, and it's only using fifteen point eight of the debt facility they have. So. The gearing isn't really an issue for Gore Street. So that was another reason why I kind of liked it. So yeah, it's just a basket case. Um, it's one of these things where they could just carry on running the fund and get paying out the income and we'll all be fine. But people get itchy feet, don't they, when discounts like this happen. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point it, something happens that 
I mean, even if the share price, someone bought it at that level, what's that? About ninety, about ninety pence, when the NAV is at one hundred and eleven. I don't know. Something could happen, or it could just keep paying lots of nice dividends. Who knows? It's just a let's see what happens sort of thing. But you know, I'm spreading the risk with these three basket cases. You know, it's only a few grand in each one. And then the next one is Schroeder Real Estate Investment Trust. Again, all of the property trusts are uh, at a big, a big discount to NAV. Its dividend is covered. Out of all the property ones, I preferred this one because mainly because the debt structure seems better than the other ones I was looking at. The soonest debt that expires is, is I think, about 2027, whereas all the other ones seem to have debt facilities that need refinancing within the year and they might have had another one that they've just had to do within the past year so all of their interest costs are going up dead quickly and i mean this this one will have interest costs go up but it's not for a few years and and then i think the rest of it is even longer term uh, loans that they have so that seems better for this company it's it's doing all right but it's at a 30 percent discount to nav and for this one, I've accounted for a 20% cut as like a worst case scenario. Well, you know, it could go worse than that. And then British American Tobacco. Basically, over the last, past 12 months, I've, I've learned that actually in other, in other areas of the world, people are still smoking a hell of a lot more than they do in England, where I've been for the previous rest of my life, I suppose. And it, it got me thinking that, oh, maybe, these, maybe smoking is going to take longer than we think to go to zero. And if they can pay us a 10% yield and just keep the dividend flat for 10 years, I've got all my money back, haven't I? And any any bonus we get from the quote-unquote healthier vaping products is just a bonus. Any, I, I'm not really hoping for any increases in share prices. I just want them to keep paying the dividend for a while. Even if they, pay ten, even if they paid whatever, whatever we're at here, 58p, say they paid that for five years and it just went flat, and then they reduced it to 50p in year 9 and 50p and 49p in year 10 you know it doesn't have to do great things at this low valuation for me to get my money's worth from buying a couple of grand in it two and a half grand I'm thinking about going for and and for that one I've accounted for a what have I accounted for I've accounted for a 20% drop in that's div- in that one's dividend and with all of those dividend cuts accounted for I should be getting still two pound fifty four more if I put the hypnosis money in these places. Haven't fully decided. I'm only ninety eight percent of the way there, but yeah, I might do that off screen now. So, so on on the on the day of the last video of, of the last um, segment, I think it was the eighteenth, wasn't it? I actually did do my first two purchases. So I bought Gore Street Energy, like I like I mentioned, and I bought Schroeder Real Estate like I mentioned. And so in the, in this spreadsheet, I've uh, accounted for, like I said, 50% drop in that, 50, eight, uh, 20% drop in that. Um, but then for the British American tobacco, uh, there isn't enough cash in the ISA um, at the moment. But obviously, when I do the Fundsmith, I'll, I'm going to be selling eight grand of Fundsmith in the IWAB ISA soon, so I'll have enough cash to do it then. And I just didn't want to... I don't normally like to be out of the market like this, but it just seemed like such a waste to buy it outside of the ISA and then a few days later sell it and then buy it in the ISA again. It's such a short amount of time. So I'm waiting on the British American tobacco. I'm waiting on the Fundsmith money to, to be sold. And the other thing I've, I've uh, kind of penciled in here in the green is uh, the other energy storage investment company. Now that one has already cut its dividend to zero. Which makes me think that actually, I should probably factor in this one going to zero at some point. But I just, I don't know, just I kind of like the fact that it it feels like rock, rock bottom when they cut the um, dividend to zero. Actually, they'd or, they had already suspended the, vid, the dividend for this one. Because it's more UK focused, so it doesn't have the diversity of the international batteries still earning the money. Now, th- this money won't be, I mean, it, I mean... All money's fungible, but this is really the the money from the compensation I got from the Woodford saga. So that isn't really 
hypnosis money going into that one. Um, but yeah, that's my plan. That's the plan I've penciled in with the green background there on this spreadsheet. Well, well, just uh, settling in for my evening of uh, watching TV and look what I've found. See, that disclaimer is very true. I make wrong decisions all the time. A second offer, one point one pound one point two four dollars per share instead of one point one six. Six point eight percent higher offer. Oh dear. Oh well, I need to I need to not regret my decisions. It was a relief to get out uh, without a big loss in the first place. So I should keep that relief feeling really. But it's. But you know, it's always hard when you realise you made the wrong choice. And who knows if another offer might come in from Concord. On, on the market open, we're almost 10% up. Alright, so the 24th, and we've just got this. So there is a little bit of a bidding war going for hypnosis. Uh, this is the people who made the original offer that was accepted or recommended. Uh, it, by Concord, yeah, they're the same people. So basically, they've offered one pound, one dollar twenty-five per share. All right, so it's it's been uh, seven days since I sold Hypnosis. So now the money, the money that I was I mentioned earlier that I was going to put into these two companies, that arrives tomorrow. Fundsmith, I'm, I've sold the rest of my, uh, the second half of my sixteen grand in Fundsmith. And that money is available tomorrow. But as you can see, one of one of the things I wanted to put the money into in the last week, it's it's just shot up by like forty percent, as you can see. So I feel like for Gresham House Energy Storage, the moment's kind of passed. BAT hasn't exactly jumped up in price and kind of put me off, but it has creeped up a tad. Where now my 1% adjusted dividend yield is just below 10%. So I don't know, I think I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that 4,198 quid in there. Just I'm just going to wait a little while for a better opportunity, I think. Or who knows, I might end up getting in at higher prices, I don't know. So I'm just going to sit on it and end this video here, I think. Uh, at some point I'm sure I'll update you on what's happened to this four grand. Uh, but I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.